Hi folks, thank you for your hard work. This is uh, the deter um, determination of the formula of a, of a hydrate. Uh, this, is, this is called actually uh, dehydration of an inorganic salt hydrate. Right? Inorganic salt hydrate is also called a mineral hydrate. I'll tell you about that a little bit more in a separate video. Okay? Now, here's what we are doing today. Mm, or this week. So you're going to use uh, the part of your kit, your home kit that has uh, this stand in it. So there's a bag in there that has uh, this stand and several of these pans. This bag of Epsom salt, it says salt, comma Epsom, and uh, the sterno can for heat, right? This is the same kind of heat that we used in the flame test experiment uh, some other week. Also gonna need to use your balance again, right? Your electronic scale. Okay, now if you want to follow the instructions exactly in the PDF, that's fine. You can do that, right? That's, that's perfectly fine. Now, uh, in this video, I want, I'm going to show you an alternative uh, that might get you better results. Okay, so I'm going to put the data table right here. And then I'm going to show you how you might get some slightly better, uh, better results. All right. All right. So here's here, here's what we do. Uh, first, um, you put your sterno can. Uh, you don't open it yet, and you put it and, and you put it under your stand there, right? This top of the stand is a material that we call wire mesh, right? And you will be heating up your pan on the wire mesh, of course, right? Now, um, what I what I what I want to say about this is the flame of the sterno can uh, is uh, best it will work best if the top of the flame touches the bottom of the wire mesh. So if the top of the flame of the sterno can touches the bottom of the wire mesh, that will be good. That will make your pan very, very hot, okay? But you see, the stand is quite tall. So the top of the flame might not touch the bottom of the wire mesh. So if you want the top of the flame to touch the bottom of the wire mesh, what you can do is, put something underneath the sterno can, right? Um, put something under here that can prop up the sterno can, right? Do not use something that is easily flammable, such as paper. Don't use paper, right? The bottom of the sterno can is not going to be hot, but just in case your sterno can spills, you do not want to have any paper or paper towel or, you know, even um, paper plates. No, do not let, do not let there be anything that is flammable um, near, on your table near your sternal can because if the sternal can falls for some reason or you know you move your hand too quickly and then you accidentally uh, spill the, 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 the fuel of your sternal can onto your table well if there's paper towel there you're going to have a fire and you're going to freak out so don't let there be paper towel napkin or any anything paper um, that is um, uh, on your table don't 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 let those things be on your table remove them before this experiment right now you can prop up your sterno can with uh, whatever you find in your kitchen um, but uh, make sure that the sterno can is quite stable and it will not be wobbly and it will not be likely to fall over okay you should uh, you should do this um, when you turn on uh, or you, sh you, you should prepare in advance uh, some platform for your sterno can so that when you turn on your sterno can you can easily put things in uh, under it so that the top of the flame will touch the bottom of the wire mesh okay? do not turn on your sterno can until your pan is ready to be heated and the reason is there is limited fuel in the sterno can and in this experiment we will be using all of the fuel in the sterno can so do not turn on the sterno can until you are actually ready to do the heating, okay? And now, uh, in the instructions here, uh, we are asking you 
to um, use three dishes, right? And we have provided three dishes. However, uh, I give you the option of using two dishes, okay? Let me show you what I mean. Uh, I'm going to move over to the data table here. For the three dishes, for the three dishes, they are asking you to um, measure the mass of this dish on your electronic balance okay, and write it right there. Then they are asking you to uh, fill your dish with a certain amount of Epsom salt. It will say in the in the in, in the in the steps how much of this you should add. So you should weigh out a certain amount of this in your dish. It doesn't have to be exactly the amount that they say, but you do have to write down exactly what you got. Okay. So the amount that they say is 0.3 to 0.8 grams. So if you got 0.56 grams, that's good. If you got 0.72 grams, that's good. You know what I mean? Anything between 0.3 and 0.8, but you have to write down exactly what you got and all of the significant digits, right? Now, you're not gonna you're not gonna see 0 0.56 or something like that on here because you're going to be weighing it with the pan. So you, you you're gonna have the weight of the pan and the weight of your of your Epsom salts together, right? So here's what I mean. I turn this on, okay? I put it right there, right? And it says, I'm waiting for it to say zero. I'm going to, it says zero now, right? So I'm going to put the pan on, right? Now it says, uh, it's hard to see on the iPad here, but it says 1.26, right? So if I want 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 grams of Epsom salt, then I'm going to add something like, 0 0.7 to this, so I want 1.96 grams of Epsom salt. So, I said that wrong. So I want I want this, I want to keep on adding Epsom salt until this says 1.96. That will give me 0 0.70 grams of Epsom salt, all right? So I take this off the balance, take it off the balance, and I add some Epsom salt, right? And then I put it on here, and oh no, instead of, so let, let, let's pretend instead of 1.96, I actually got um, 2.75. Oh my God, 2.75, should I start over? No, no, it's okay, it's okay. Because 2.75 minus the, the mass of the pan is, uh, is, is, is um, right, 2.75 minus, is 1.2.75. Is 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 one point five zero? Okay, actually that, that that is too much. Okay, so if if you if you add if you add um, Epsom salt and and you get two point seven five here, that that is too much, right? So the maximum you could get here is two point zero five. How do I know that? If I add zero point eight to this number, that's two point zero five. So the maximum mass of Epsom salt plus pan is two point zero five. The minimum is going to be one point five six, right? So any number between 1.56 and 2.05 can go right here. Mass of aluminum dish plus Epsom salt. Any number between uh, 1.56 and um, 2.05. If it's more than 2.05, that's going to be too much. If it's less than 1.56, that's going to be too little. That's for me. That's for me because my pan started out at 1.26 grams your pan might be slightly different. So what I'm saying is you need to add 0.3 to 0.8. So add anything between 0.3 and 0.8 grams of Epsom salt here, and it's going to give you a higher mass, higher by 0.3 all the way up to 0.8 grams, all right? Good. So you fill this with your Epsom salt, and then you turn on your sterno, open the can and turn it on just the way I turned it on in the flame test experiment, right? And then you heat up, you heat up your pan. Do not do it on your laptop. I'm just doing this so that you could see, but do not do it on your laptop because the laptop will be severely damaged if it gets hot, right? So you will heat this up and you will heat it up for 10 minutes, right? Now, here's something that they have that they did not mention. Um, if you observe or if you hear popping noises, then that, that, that's because um, there are water molecules inside the crystals of the salt. The heat is causing the water molecules to go away as water gas. 
But if they go away with violence, then the water might pop out. That's okay. But when the water pops out, if some of your Epsom salt crystals pops out with it, that's not okay. You cannot let anything pop out of here. So to be safe, I suggest, it's not required, but I suggest you cover this with your, the other aluminum pan, okay? Uh, I'm not sure where my other aluminum pan went. Oh, here it is. Okay. I suggest that you cover this. You have three of these. I suggest you cover this with one of them, all right? You don't have to, but I suggest. If you cover it, then you must leave a hole for the water gas to escape while it's heating up, okay? And then, um, after 10 minutes, um, you must remove this and look at it. If this is foggy, or if there are drops of water on here, then you are not done heating, right? You have to keep on heating this until um, the, the, the pan that you use to cover will be perfectly dry, right? It might make you heat for more than 10 minutes. I'm not sure. Okay, so uh, once you have heated this one for 10 minutes, you will um, put it down, right? You'll put it down on some surface that is not plastic. Wood, wood would be good. Why? It's very hot. It will melt plastic. Do not put it on paper because it might burn the paper. I'm not sure. Just to be safe, put it on wood, put it on metal. Do not put it on plastic, okay? That was uh, pan number one. But... Do not let the sterno flame just burn for no reason. Don't waste the, the fuel. You have to, while this, while your pan was burning, you got to fill another pan with Epsom salt. So you got to, you got to weigh another pan and write down the other pan's weight. So while your first one is burning, let me move this off the laptop so I can use the laptop. While your first pan is burning, Write the weight of your second pan, right? Fill your second pan with Epsom salts. 0. 0.3 to 0. 0.8 grams more than the empty mass of the of the dish, right? And then, and then when your first pan is uh, cooling, immediately put your second pan on so that the, the fuel of the sterno can is not wasted. It will immediately be heating the second pan. You know what I mean? So do it, do it right away. So, in other words, prepare your second pan while your first pan was still heating, okay? Good, good. And now, um, while the second pan is heating, I'd like for you to not prepare a third pan. I don't want you to prepare a third pan. If you do prepare a third pan, that's okay. You'll be following the instructions exactly as written. That's okay. You'll get the full points, but... Uh, I would prefer, uh, and this is because you would get better results in the calculation, I would prefer if you do not prepare a third pan. When the second pan is done heating, like 10 minutes are over, remove the third pan, put it on uh, a, a, a heat-safe surface to cool off, right? And put the first pan back on. I want you to put the first pan back on, all right? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, before you put the first pan back on, you have to weigh the first pan. So, so after it's cool, after this is cool, and your second pan is still heating, after this is cool, you weigh this, and you write the weight for the first pan right here. After heating, you write the weight right there. Do this when this is cold enough to touch. It doesn't have to be cold. It can, it can be warm. It's okay, but it has to be it has to be cold enough that you could touch it. And uh, if it's cold enough for you to touch, then it's going to be safe to put on this plastic surface of the balance. If this is too hot to touch, then if you put it on this plastic surface, you might melt the plastic surface and you could never use this again. Okay? So, as soon as this is warm enough to touch or cold enough to touch, you put this on here and you write the weight after heating. And once you've done that, after the after your second pan, after your second pan is done heating, you put the second pan away to cool, and you put the first pan back on here. And the reason for that is, it's very likely that the first time you heated, you did not remove all of the water molecules. So I want you to give the first pan another chance to get rid of all the water. 
What does this mean for the data table? This means that right here, you will be writing the same number as you wrote right there. All right? I'll say it again. Right here, I want you to write the same number for the empty pan as you wrote right here. This number, this number will be the same. All right? And then for this, this, I want you to write the same number as you wrote down here for after heating. So the first pan after heating, you write the number right here. That number, write it again right here. Right? Why? Because this pan, this is pan number one. It doesn't have any new Epsom salt in it. Nothing changed between the time you weighed this after heating and the time you put this on for a second try at heating. Okay? So I want you to let this heat for 10 minutes and then let this cool off. While you're waiting for this to cool off, wait, I'm sorry, uh, let this heat for 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be 10 minutes. You just keep on heating this until the fuel is gone. That might be 10 minutes. That might be a little bit more than 10 minutes. I want you to use the entire can of fuel. All right. It says also in the instructions, you got to use the entire can of fuel. But anyways, um, when you're done heating this, let it cool. All right. And while this is cooling, you can go back to pan number two. That's pan number two. That's pan number two. So it's, it's now cool. So now I weigh this and I write the weight right here. Uh, after heating. So for pan number two, I write that right there. Okay. Pan number two is not going to get another chance of heating because we don't have enough fuel. Only pan number one is going to get another chance at heating, and that's what this is. When this is cool enough to weigh, remove pan number two. When this is cool enough to weigh, you put it on here, and you write down the weight after heating, all right? Folks, this number, it might be very close to this number. That is okay, all right? This number might be very close to this number. That is okay. I suspect that this number, when you write it, it's going to be slightly lower than this number. Because I think when you heat pan number one for the second time, you're going to lose some more water. So this number is going to be a little bit lower than that number. That's what I think is going to happen. Okay? So those are all, that's it for my instructions. Um, please remember that... Uh, this is going to be hot. The most common lab injury in Chem 65 is a uh, first degree burn, which is a minor burn that causes redness and pain of the skin. You, if, if, if you get such a burn, the correct procedure is to put your burned skin underneath cold running water for a long time. And when you think you're done, you're not done. Keep it under that water because the water will be removing heat. If you take your hand out of the water, out of the cold running water after a few seconds of, of washing, that's not okay because the skin underneath the top layer is still hot and it is still in the process of cooking. So uh, that's not good, right? So uh, first degree burn is very minor and the pain will go away after a very short time, okay? But uh, uh, I would prefer it if you do not get any burns. So when you see the metal, remember that this metal is gonna be hot and it doesn't look different when it's hot versus when it's cold. So you got to just remember with your mind that that's gonna be hot, okay? Uh, thank you.